high grade 12 five seconds before you're all writing prelims and i decided to do a bit of a video discussing your terrible answering technique in general for life sciences and i know that this is across the board so i decided i'll do a little video to give you some ideas on how to um answer better please for us teachers who have to mark your work or to mark the drivel that you put on the page okay Right, so this is where it goes. So firstly, um, I'm just talking paper one here. I'm not looking at, I mean, some of it obviously uh, translates to paper two, but um, we'll discuss specifically paper one. Um, you have to answer the question. So the first thing is, oh, hello, Hardy Dar. The first thing is you have to read the whole question, which means you read to the full stop. You read to the question mark, you read the whole question, because sometimes those last few words give you the context. And if you don't have the context, then you answer incorrectly. So they might say, talk about an ex like um, plant genetic engineering, but they give you the example. So they want you to do it in uh, wheat or something, or to create um, drought-resistant maize. But then if you don't read the part about drought-resistant maize, then you're just going to talk about plant genetic engineering in general, um, you know, and you're not going to discuss it in context of maize. So that's the first thing. Make sure you create the context. So you answer the question um, with the correct context. So if they ask you to do a flow diagram of, um, of recombinant DNA technology and they're looking at a specific protein like insulin, don't say the protein, say insulin. Be specific. I'm sure you've seen on your papers before, teachers write vague all over the place. Um, so that vague is because you're not being specific to the question. So you're answering it in context of the question, of the source that you've been given. And the other thing you might be given is TMR, which we phrased or coined the phrase long before you did because we've been getting TMR from students since the 1990s, okay? Um, yes, that's how old I am. So basically, um, so what I mean by TMR is if I'm asking you about translation or if I'm asking you about to do a flow diagram of translation or a question on translation, don't tell me about transcription. Because that is not what the question is. So the idea is you don't want to vomit things onto the page and just hope that I will find, or not me, your marker, your teacher, will just find the correct answer in all the drivel and all the other stuff that you write. Okay, so you need to only give the answer for the question that has been asked. Number one, you're wasting your time if you give too much. And number two, you are, um, yeah, you're going to irritate your teacher. You're going to irritate whoever's marking your paper. Okay, so that's the second thing. The third thing is those long questions. You know those long questions with four or five marks, you're like, I actually have no idea how to answer this, and I don't really know where I'm going to go with this. What you need to do is you need to break it up and break, or break it into pieces. You need to step-by-step step explain it. And then when you think you are finished, the whole long question, you need to then link it back to the question. So you need to see, so for example, it talks about, the nice question was in a past paper a few years ago, about um, would stopping take would, would stopping prescribing antibiotics lead to less antibiotic resistance bacteria? So the answer is yes, okay, most likely. And you have to say why. So you explain the whole thing. If there's no selection pressure on the, on the bacteria, then antibiotic resistance will not be selected for more than... Uh, antibiotic sensitive and therefore is a, a chance of losing the antibiotic resistance alleles um, and then this is how you always you really get three out of four or four out of five or four out of six you're always losing that last mark the way to get that last mark is to now link it back to the question so with this because there's no selection pressure and because antibiotics are not um yeah the equal chance of of either alleles being um inherited it will lead to eventually uh, uh, the resulting of, or the result of lack of no more antibiotic resistant bacteria. So you link it back. So that's the next thing. The other thing you need to know when it comes to answering is what are you answering? What is the question word? So if it says explain, what does explain mean? Explain means you need to give a definition. You need to then describe what's happening and then say why. So there's three things. An explain question is a big question. That's it. Discuss. You need to look at all aspects of it. Describe, especially with a graph or with a picture. You have to tell me something. In my head, if I read the information that you're saying, I will be able to visualize it in my head. I'm, we're good at that, teachers, just so you know. But you have to still explain, describe it in such a way that we can see it in our minds. Um, justify, give reasons from the text. 
okay? It might be all reasons from your own knowledge, or it might be both. Just remember, even in a paper one, you still have sources. You're still going to be talking about those sources, and you're still going to be um, using those sources to answer your questions, okay? It's not straight from your textbook using the text. Um, so that's justify. Good example, this it says which side do you agree with and justify your answer. If it's for three marks, give three justifications. Rather be, don't, you know, or, or explain, yeah, try and give all three just, justifications, three different reasons. Evaluate, you have to look at both sides, but you still have to come up with which is better. So if you've got evaluating A versus B and you decide A is better, don't give me 40 reasons why B is better and then choose A. Like if you're going to be choosing A, choose A with more justification or for that side, okay? Then, I oh, saw off the top of my head, okay, um, I think that's pretty much all the answering techniques for now, okay? And then just, guys, just remember, um, you know, paper one, timing is important. It's a long paper, three hours is long. You need to, you need to plan your time well. That last half an hour, you've got very little little energy left so you want to not leave too many marks for that last half an hour um so that you can you can get through it oh two more things number one you can write in point form often if you're a babbler and you get caught up in your answers and you start talking in circles then it's probably best for you to um be answering um in point form and then the second thing is that you have to remember that the teacher or your marker is not looking at the source so anything that needs to be, you need anything in the source that's related to your answer, you have to take out of the source. So you have to extract that correct information and put it into, into your answer. Don't assume that we are going to look at the source to get the information. The information that, that we are marking is what you've extracted and put on that page. Right, so these are some tips for paper one. I hope that they help you a little bit and that it makes a little bit of sense to you. Um, and yeah, I guess these are tips for prelims and for finals, and I will be doing regular um, updates and videos on different sections. So, oh, good luck, guys. Bye.